You're about to experience the best moments of your paltry, miserable life. Savor it for all it's worth. The executives from the utility that runs Japan's damaged nuclear plant have heard a familiar request from some of the people who hold stakes in their firm. Shareholders for Tokyo Electric Power Company have spoken up at an annual general meeting. They've demanded TEPCO get out of the nuclear energy business now. More than 300 investors called on TEPCO to dismantle all its nuclear facilities. The company owns and operates Fukushima Daiichi. All I want to ask is that they dismantle the nuclear plants. We can't ensure their safety. No shit. TEPCO executives said the company has now recorded the loss for three consecutive years. They've had to compensate people affected by the accident at Fukushima Daiichi. They say the rising price of fuel has hurt their bottom line too. TEPCO executives told shareholders they have no plans to dismantle all nuclear facilities. They said nuclear energy is essential for a stable supply of electricity. Executives from the utility that runs Japan's damaged nuclear plant have heard the familiar request from some of the people who hold stakes in their firm. Shareholders for Tokyo Electric Power Company have spoken up at an annual general meeting. They've demanded TEPCO get out of the nuclear energy business now. NHK World's Chia Yamagishi reports. About 2,000 TEPCO shareholders gathered in Tokyo. It's the third annual meeting since the nuclear accident at the Fukushima Daiichi plant. A time to raise questions and concerns. The management moves very slowly. No shit. They only apologize after problems are revealed. No shit. They should think about the people who have been affected by the nuclear accident. No shit. Compensation packages have cost TEPCO billions of dollars. The company has recorded the loss for three consecutive years. It posted a net deficit of about $7 billion in fiscal 2012. The rising price of fuel imports has also hurt the bottom line. Executives are eager to start generating more power at home. Some shareholders have questioned TEPCO's plan to restart its nuclear reactors. <laughs> they say the accident at Fukushima Daiichi has not ended. What I want to ask is that they dismantle all their nuclear plants. We cannot ensure their safety. About 350 shareholders demanded TEPCO decommission its two remaining nuclear plants, but executives and other shareholders dismissed the idea. Saying atomic power is necessary to maintain a stable supply of electricity. In addition to proper maintenance of the facilities, we will carry out measures to raise the level of safety so we can restart the plant. But some shareholders say there is no perfect way to ensure the safety of nuclear plants. They say they keep pressuring the utility to change its outlook so the mistakes of the past aren't repeated. Government officials say more than 16,000 residents received incorrect estimates. The officials have been carrying out an ongoing survey among Fukushima Prefecture's 2 million residents. They asked them to fill out forms about their activities during the first four months following the nuclear accident. Scientists at a radiological institute use the forms to calculate exposure estimates. Officials give residents their results as the data comes in. They say among those who got faulty estimates, more than 12,000 people were given figures up to 0.4 millisieverts lower than what was actually correct. They say the scientists base the calculations on wrong dates in a computer program. Fukushima officials say even with the correct figures, it's unlikely the estimated dosage would pose a health risk. The annual limit for radiation exposure for the general public in Japan is one millisievert. U.S. President Barack
Obama faced criticism for failing to live up to his promises on climate change in his first term. Now he's hoping to counter the critics with a new plan to cut carbon pollution. He's proposing limits on emissions for all U.S. power plants. Power plants can still dump unlimited amounts of carbon pollution into the air for free. That's not right, that's not safe, and it needs to stop. He said the question is whether the United States will have the courage to act before it's too late. Obama promised to promote the use of clean energy. He says he wants renewable sources to power at least 6 million homes by 2020. He also promises to work with major emitters such as China and India to cut carbon emissions. I'm watching bankers starve the world. And I'm watching illegal and unjust wars I'm watching nuclear meltdowns and pollution While the vast majority continue to snore I'm watching the surveillance state be built in the march to World War III I'm watching the sheep led to the slaughter While we're sitting in front of the propaganda machine Welcome to my alternate reality Perversions all over the net Actually I'm not Cause I don't wanna see I'm watching a charade of politicians Being controlled by secret societies <laughs>
More Japanese people are waiting to get married or have children. Those are the findings of a government report that shows no sign of a turnaround for Japan's low birth rate. Officials blame lack of job security and low salaries for contributing to the long-running problem. The report says that in 2011, the average age at which Japanese men got married for the first time was nearly 31. It was 29 for women. That's about three years later for men when compared to 1980. It's almost four years later for women. It also says the average age for a woman to have her first child was older than 30 for the first time. It was slightly later than the previous year. As of 2010, a record percentage of men and women remained unmarried into their 50s. The cabinet approved the annual report, which proposes a range of measures to address the trend. We have to implement emergency measures to address this critical situation. We'll support people at these stages of their life, marriage, pregnancy and childbirth. This is in line with the government's economic growth strategy. The minister said the officials will look at successful attempts to increase birth rates around the world, such as making it easier for young people to find housing. Iran's supreme leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei has defended the country's nuclear program. Analysts say he wants to dampen expectations that the new Iranian administration will make concessions to the West. Our nuclear development program has been carried out legally and transparently. I believe the U.S. and other Western countries don't want to see the nuclear issue resolved. The Supreme Leader also blamed the United States for breaking an agreement with Iran. Khamenei's Wednesday address was his first since Hassan Rouhani was elected president. Rouhani earlier hinted at more transparency on Iran's nuclear program to build trust with the international community. Foreign Minister Ali Akbar Salehi has revealed that Rouhani is choosing a delegation to resume negotiations with Western countries on the nuclear program. He said the next round of talks will resume after Rouhani's official inauguration in August.